It's gonna be okay. You can do this. It's just a resin pour. You've got this. You've done it before. It didn't go that well. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. What's up, man? What on earth are you stressing about? Oh, I'm just getting ready for the resin pour for my dungeon sewer build. Listen, you've got this. You haven't even finished painting the project yet. Stop procrastinating. You're right. Just get on with the build and think about the pour later. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks. Get on with it. Uh, just, just before you go... Who on earth are you talking to? Uh, no one. Right, well can you keep it down? I'm trying to get some sleep. Okay, see ya. Fine. Hey guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. Today I am going to be carrying on with the dungeon sewer system project that I have been working on potentially finishing it. Now this project has included quite a few different elements, everything from 3D printing off the sewer tiles that were sent to me by Zane Morgan Crafts. I have done foam carving. I have glued more tiny bricks than I would like to admit. I've also added in some Conway boards and LEDs from Terraintronics just to bring some more atmosphere into the build. And I've even added sound effects that can be triggered by magnets in the base of your minis. And that brings me to where I am now. I've got the whole project painted up and ready to put some texture into and see if we can move forward with the rest of the build. I did have to start painting this on the hottest day of the year so far. So all of my paint is drying as soon as it hits this board, my dry brush board, it's like almost too dry to actually dry brush. <laughs> uh, so this highlight layer doesn't look great. Thankfully I'm going to be painting all over it and we can get on to the texturing, the painting and then the big resin pour that I'm worried about. And in reality uh, there's been no point really in me doing that white undercoat because this graphite grey is pretty much covering it all, all up. I'm going for a grey stone kind of look to the sewer and yeah there's no point in me filming all these earlier parts because it's going to be quite dark for a while so I'm going to come back and I'm just going to focus on some of the details once I've got all of the stonework painted in but generally I'm going for a grey kind of stonework lots of muck lots of grime so Every good D&D campaign needs a proper dungeon sewer crawl and if you're looking for a great sewer tile system then definitely check out Zane Morgan Crafts for the modular tiles that I used in this build. I glued mine together but honestly there are a million different layouts that you could create with these things. You can download the STLs for these awesome sewer tiles yourself so I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone who wants to check them out. I'm not going to go crazy with the tutorial side of this build, but I'm going to have to talk about the poop. Yep, poop, excrement. We've added some poop into the build. Uh, for this, I just used some sand and wood glue with a bit of burnt umber paint. The color right now is a bit deceptive because it does actually dry a lot darker. With the woodwork on the build, I used an oak brown from Army Painter and I just did that over all of the wood. I then just did a skeleton bone dry brushing over the top to bring out the highlights and then I just kind of tied it together with a dark brown wash. I used Agrax Earthshade and that just kind of evens out again. With painting and all of the details in this project I wanted to keep it as basic and as simple as possible. Whenever you're looking at the project, you're kind of looking at the whole thing as opposed to zoning in on the details. So with the pipes and metal work, I kept it very, very basic and I just used a plate metal from Army Painter before addressing the weathering effects. Retrospectively, it was actually quite awkward to get in and around and paint all of these bits, uh, probably because I had glued the tiles together. So next time, I might actually paint the tiles before gluing them together. Anyway, I wanted to add uh, quite a bit of rust into the project, so I used the rust effects again from Army Painter. And yeah, it's a little bit garish to begin with, but it does settle down. And then whenever I go back at the end with a uh, brown wash, this all ties it together again and kind of dulls down some of the 
garishness from that orange. So with it being a dungeon sewer, there's going to be lots of leakage and weird liquids all over the place. So again, I'm just using some Agrax Earthshade. I should have probably used the gloss version of Agrax Earthshade because obviously this is going to dry matte. But I address that problem a little bit later in the build, so it kind of works out in the end. Okay, so I've painted the inside and it's looking pretty good. Added a bit of texture in there, but there's still some paint drying um, and washes drying and stuff. So I'm going to address the back. The back's a problem because um, I've got all of this wiring and then there's a lot of dead space here. So I've got some XPS foam. I'm going to build up some walls and create a flat top sort of encasing the wiring at the back. And I may even add some tiles to the top, uh, making it like extendable play you could play on the top pretending that they are the rooms behind this whole section here uh, because originally i was thinking maybe i could make these the rooms but the wiring in the way it's just not practical so an extra playing surface up here on top and it'll just tie it together a bit better so that's what i'm going to do now so i printed off this little panel from terrain tronics and the link is in the description below this just holds the conway boards in place uh, in the right position so I can build my foam up around that and it means that whenever I'm plugging in my power these things aren't waggling all over the place and it's all neat and tidy. So just finishing up the base coat on the back section, which is going to take a bit of time to dry. So um, while that's drying, I'm going to start gluing my minis. Originally, I was going to include a classic D&D monster like a Nothic in this build. Then I came across this slimy beast on Thingiverse for free and I had to include him. If you were doing a D&D sewer crawl campaign, what monsters would you be throwing at your players? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I have printed off some cool extra little bits and pieces to stick into my dungeon. I've already got the sewer beast painted up, got a whole bunch of skeletons that I printed off, very tiny skeletons that were breaking apart, but it didn't matter because broken bones and everything's fine. So I painted those, I've got some barrels and crates, and in Cheetah Box, I kind of stuck a little tiny rat on top of this one small barrel, which I really, really like. It looks super cool. Um, yeah, so I have to paint all of this stuff. Okay. So gluing this guy in isn't proving to be very easy. I glued all the skeletons in the bottom and that makes it awkward to glue in the right position. I want, so I'm not exactly sure what to do here. I think I'm just going to glue it at a few key points and then hope it stays in place when I pour the resin. Okay, hopefully 
hopefully he's in the right position. The only problem is <laughs> I've super glued my finger to him and I'm afraid to move my finger now because he might move. So I'm gonna have to wait until that's really glued before I can separate my finger from my project. There we go. And he is glued in place. Okay, so I am almost ready to move on to the resin pour. All of my bits and pieces are glued into place. I've got my skeleton pile, I've got the beast in place, and everything's looking really, really cool. Only problem is, it doesn't look wet. Even in the areas where I've used the washes, it doesn't look wet. So I am gonna use some gloss varnish, but I'm also gonna use the gloss varnish to seal the whole entire basin. Uh, so that whenever I do the resin pour, I don't get the paint reacting with uh, the resin because that's happened to me on a couple of projects. So I'm using this gloss varnish from Liquitex. I've used it on projects before, it has worked. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Effectively, the project is finished. Everything's painted, everything's glued in. I have it blended into the top and I'm ready to do the resin pour. But I'm still very nervous about that. I don't know if you guys saw the Stranger Things project that I did. This one, which you can still watch by the way, if you click the link up there. I had lots of problems with that project and I don't want to spend any time with this project drilling out holes and bubbles and any of those issues. So I'm hoping that I have covered all of those issues and that this pour goes really, really well, but genuinely nervous about it. And I'm gonna do it right now. Come on, Michael, you can do this. All right, brain. You don't like me and I don't like you. But let's just do this and I can get back to killing you with beer. It's a deal. Shouldn't get any leaks now. And we're back to where we started this video. Let's get this thing poured.
been really trying to up my game when it comes to pouring resin. I'm really interested in those deeper resin pours and it's become very apparent that half the battle is choosing the right resin. I get mine from Vista Resin and I just wanted to give those guys a shout out for their amazing customer service. I had several conversations on the phone with them offering me tips and advice on how to get better results. In this build I'm using Vista Lake but I'm going to be upgrading to Vista Mariana just so I can do some deeper pours without worrying about flash curing. Alright, resin pour complete. It's relatively bubble free, which I'm really, really happy with. And there's no recesses in this the way there was in this project. So I shouldn't be getting extra bubbles from underneath. I haven't poured it too deep. So I'm really hoping I don't get an exothermic reaction because that would just suck. Uh, there are some bubbles still on the top that keep coming up. I'm going to leave it for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to go around and pop them all again. But resin pour done. Hopefully I don't get any leaks. Hopefully this all goes okay. I'm going to leave it for 72 hours. I'm going to cover it with something so that my cat doesn't step in it. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. Yes! Okay, I might have a serious problem here. Project is smoking. I don't know if you can see the smoke. See the smoke coming off? So that is possibly an exothermic reaction taking place, which could really just ruin the project. And I've got a couple of bubbles here and there. Well, the bubbles aren't too big an issue because I'm going to do ripples on top. This smoke. Please don't mess up on me, come on. Okay, we're just gonna have to leave it and see what happens. I can feel the heat coming off this thing on my face. I really need to figure this thing out. Like, I, I thought that I didn't pour it too deep, but clearly I poured it a bit too deep again. It's not done a completely terrible exothermic reaction again, which is cool. Got a few bubbles, we can cope with that. Also, I'm headed off to the forest for a little holiday tomorrow for a week. So that's all I can do on this now. So I'm going to have a little fun in the forest. And then I'm going to come back and see if I can salvage this. Not that it's a complete disaster, but there's still some work to do. Not a perfect pour yet again. Someday, I'll make a project and manage to get it just like I have it in my head. I'm back from my holiday and gladly I can report that the pour was not a disaster. There's one or two bubbles here and there, a few little patches that I would prefer to be better, but I can kind of cover that up with a water texture and also with some UV resin, which I'm gonna do in a minute. I wanna do some splashing water effects around the sewer beast, but once that's done, I think I'm finished. So you can see from the side profile here, I've got a couple of bubbles that have come up during the curing process. But again, I kind of got away with it because it suits the project, especially in around the beast. Those bubbles, they're gonna suit him perfectly. How am I gonna get this acrylic off? That's the question. Without destroying the project. <gasps> there we go.
know in the comments what you think of the build guys. How would you use Zane's awesome sewer tiles? Would you glue them and create a set piece or keep them modular? Would you pour the resin or keep the basin dry? There's so many different things that you can do with the sewer build. Don't forget to subscribe to Zane Morgan Crafts and Terrainetronics, both bringing awesome hobby content to YouTube, but also creating assets and components that you can bring into your own builds at home. If you enjoy my content, please hit the bell. There's a good chance that even if you're subscribed, YouTube isn't telling you about my new videos. Also, a huge thanks as always to all of the awesome people scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Your support on Patreon really helps me to keep this channel rolling and I really appreciate it. For Patreon members, just to say to keep an eye out on Discord as we have just started to do some hobby hangouts over there and it's a great way to connect with other people and get some crafting and painting done. Anyway, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time for another build.